How are you going? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. How's it been in Melbourne? I uh, imagine it's probably been pretty hard with COVID, isolation. Yeah, it was fine. I um, uh, actually didn't mind it too much, to be honest. Don't mind. Uh, turns out I'm pretty good with isolation. <laughs> were, you, were you writing? What, what were you doing with your time off? No, just working. Um, yep. I'm also, uh, I'm head of engineering at Linktree, which is a, an app um, for, it's like a service you might have heard of if you, you know, see it on people's Instagrams and things like hmm. that. So um, I've been just sort of leaning into that a lot and been quite busy this year. So good idea. Um, yeah, I, I mean, engineering and music are like my two loves and I just kind of can't stop doing them both. So yeah, that's just how it, how it always goes. I, f I find that so interesting because yeah, a lot of musicians have, you know, full-time jobs uh, yeah. and that, that's a pretty solid one. Like usually you wouldn't think, you know, engineering, you know, <laughs> it's pretty high up. Always a fallback. Uh, I'm just a massive like nerd for, I've um, been programming stuff since I was like, eight years old and so it's uh i was always like a fallback sort of thing while i was because I, I mean i had a career in this for a while before uh before music started and then um like i you know i didn't start writing songs till i was like 26 and so oh really that um, yeah so I, like i've been working for much longer than i'd you know than i have been doing music so how did you get into songwriting at 26 it's just a hobby i don't know i moved to melbourne uh at about 23 and like I found, made a bunch of friends here and then I started seeing like friends in like similar jobs were just you know playing gigs at bars and stuff like that and I was like hey I've always kind of wanted to do that and I thought I thought I'd give it a go and started like just it wasn't very good at seeing covers because I don't like learning songs I don't like like reading tabs and mm. I'm a bit less structured in how I approach things so I just kind of like played a bunch of chords that sounded good and got to a point where I was like, I think this might, I might as well just write my own lyrics to this song. <laughs> um, yeah. And obviously it's taken off in a massive, massive way. You've worked with some yeah. of the DJs in the world. Um, yeah. Kashmir, um, Don Diablo, um, you've even written with Louis from One Direction. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Someone, you the, uh... <laughs> what's that? Sorry. Someone sent you some, uh, some notes, I think. Oh, I, I researched my interviews, of course. Um, oh, hey, and the other one I was going to say was um, John Legend. Um, yeah. All these like massive, massive accomplishments, and you've only started writing since you were twenty six. Like that, that's crazy. What um, what do the people in the office think when you tell them that you write songs and you sing? Uh, it's a bit novel, I think, for them. Um, in that, you know, it's a bit novel for me to be completely honest. Like these are yeah. workmates; they work with them every day, and just you know, I'll talk to them about things. And then a lot of people don't know. Actually, one of the guys that started recently was like, Man, like I, I heard your songs like before I worked here, and then he worked here for a few months and didn't even like, hadn't clicked that you know that they were they were my songs until <laughs> someone posted about it in Slack or something. So <laughs> it's it's interesting. I, I mean, it's a. Uh, the question I get a lot is like, how do you balance both things? Mm. Um, and I'm not one for like, I'm not one for balance. I'm just like, I just kind of like throw myself into things at certain times and, you know, just do what I got to do to get by. I just, I really like to be busy. So, and having like, having like what amounts to two full-time jobs effectively keeps me pretty busy. I, I bet you probably have like a do it all sort of mindset. Like can't say no, yeah. no can't say not, just try to do it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. <laughs> um and so you've yeah so you've released two singles this year um yep. first starting with i'm doing fine mm -hmm. um, which is of course about not being fine um <laughs> please tell us about the writing of that song i i really loved it when i saw the video thanks man um i i wrote that song in uh in sydney um with a couple of friends who i collaborate on things with um quite a lot and we uh one of the other guys came up with the idea, like the name of the song, I'm doing fine. But then when he sung it, it was like a whole different thing. And I was, I just jumped in straight away. I was like, whoa, hang on. That title is amazing, but I, I gotta tell you, like, it's not about that. It's totally about this. And, you know, it's about when you say you're uh, doing fine, but you're on the inside, you're not. And I mean, I wrote that as a, uh, uh, like ultimately as a, it's like my own story, you know, it's really like my own experience, um, with, with mental health and, and that whole, uh, 
the idea that talking to people about it and actually opening up about it, that's what like, that's what helped me get through it. Mm. Uh, and it was a pretty like emotional experience writing that song. Cause I normally, you know, you normally bash out a song with people in like over a day or a couple of days and you know, you've got a demo and you just kind of go, yeah, pretty good. Mm. Let's move on to the next one. But this one, like we started writing and we were just so sure that it was something special that we just had to keep working on it until we found, thought it was fantastic. And so we, we had like a whole week together, just, just writing, writing this song and coming up with the ideas and like coming back every day and, and like revisiting it and changing things that weren't quite right. And, uh, and it was a very emotional uh, week. <laughs> By the end of it, we were like completely exhausted, just totally, uh, just, you know, just, we're just listen, we would listen back to it and think like, wow, like I can't believe we kind of got there. We got, we got out what we wanted to say, you know, we, we did it all in a way that we were all super proud of. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I remember I sent the demo of that, like after the first, first week I sent it to my wife and she doesn't normally like, like any of the music that I make because she doesn't, you know, she's way cooler than I am. She doesn't <laughs> like listen to pop music. She's you know, got different tastes. And so she normally doesn't like, does, doesn't like love all the, like this music that I write. Yeah. But uh, I remember sending it to her and she, like her response was just like, oh, wow, you know, th this is like so special. And I was like, damn, that, that, that must be a good thing. If she's finally like <laughs> turning around and saying that, saying that it's special, I'm like, maybe it must be. And so I've always been super proud of that song. Well, I think like, if you just like look at the lyric video, if you just like read the lyrics, it, it's clear that it's a very special song. Um, and I, I would like for you to like, talk more about like the song itself and specifically the lyric video um because that lyric video is probably one of the best lyric videos i've ever seen it's very very powerful oh, thanks <laughs> thank you um that whole thing came about i had a whole other idea for a video um that i was working on with a friend of mine um and we had some you know some commitments to like get some videos filmed and things you know we needed to we knew we needed to have a video for the song and we knew it needed to be something that we all thought was really uh, special. And I, I tried a few different things, you know, I'd met with a few different people and been through a whole bunch of like uh, concepts and, and briefs and things like that. And we were settled on one thing with uh, um, these like portraits and like moving portraits of like people of all ages and, and ethnicities. And, um, and we sort of started planning for it and then COVID happened and uh, it just meant we weren't able to like deliver on it. And we just, you know, that meant we started pushing back the the release date of I'm doing fine. We're like, well, we don't want to release it yet. It's like no one really knew what was going on at the start of this year and hmm. what the world was like. And it just didn't seem like the right time to be, to be putting it out. And, uh, and then when we did decide to do it, we were sort of still in lockdown. So we had like, had to sort of go through that whole process again of like, all right, well, what could, what could we do? And um, uh, someone, I can't remember who, had the, the idea of, of putting this together as like, you know, a series of text messages and things like that. And, uh, and I just sort of, I was being so close to the song, I had so many ideas around what that might be and how that might look like. And uh, um, my wife and I actually put it all together ourselves and, uh, and planned it all out and, and executed on it. And I think like, we just had to spend a lot of time thinking about how to, uh, oh, nice. What sort of dog you got? Sorry about that. Um, it's a Maltese right. Shih Tzu. <laughs> oh, so cute. I love Maltese Shih Tzu. I'm surprised my dog hasn't already been just <laughs> going, going mental. But we, uh, yeah, we just decided to like do it ourselves and spend a bunch of time figuring out like what the, what it might say and how we might want it to, to feel and, and like, um, yeah, the response is amazing to it. You know, I really didn't expect it. Like, I, I feel like I was really happy with it and the, you know, the way that we put it together and, and everything like that. But man, people just really, it resonated with people and in a way that I didn't expect, you know, it was, uh, it was really, uh, really cool. Um, but, you know, it kind of opened uh, a lot of, I mean, if you've ever read the YouTube comments on it, which I have a few times and like, there's this people on there who really like it connected with them in like a, in a really special way. And it's just super humbling. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll have to check out the YouTube comments. Um, cause that, 
normally, normally don't read the comments to things because normally they're terrible. Um, <laughs> but not this case. <laughs> no, I, I, I quite like them. They're heartwarming. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, and going on to the second single, which is the current single, Wrinkles. Um, yeah. I understand it has a special connection to your grandfather. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's about some advice he gave to you when you were younger. Um, yeah, do you want to talk well, about yeah, totally. I wasn't that much younger, to be honest. I um, it wasn't wasn't all that long ago, but it was uh, the last time I got to see him in his own house before he was moved into a care home, uh, and before he then passed away. Um, but it, it was this uh, when he passed away, I was just you know I spent a lot of time thinking about him and thinking about just you know the times that we'd spent together and just the one thing that really stuck out was like the last time I really saw him in like in his own environment. And, you know, the last time I really had an opportunity to connect and where I got to like ask questions. And, and I just kind of, I realized that I'd had this really unique opportunity at that point to just ask them all these questions and to just be, you know, things that I didn't know when I was younger or like, it just kind of occurred to me that I'd always taken them, taken it for granted that they would be there. And I was asking them things about how they met and, you know, what they did when they were younger and, you know, what their lives were like before they had my dad and, and they got out the photo albums and, you know, I, we were flicking through them and uh, it just always stuck with me because, and there was this point afterwards where I just wanted to write this song about this one moment in particular where we were looking at a photo of my, my grandpa and he, uh, and he just looked exactly the same it's like there's a few times in my life where I have uh you know you, you like your worldview shifts a little and like you're the how you view th certain things changes um and for me like this was a real eye-opening uh moment to think about age and and aging as as a concept um because I'd never really like spent too much time thinking about it but there's this photo of my grandpa where he was you know, 15 years old and, and smiling and it's just undeniably him. Like it was absolutely just him. And this is clearly the same person that was sitting in front of me. And he, he just, you know, he laughed, uh, laughed it off. Cause I was like, wow, like you look so young, but, and he just said, you know, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm still the same. And he always, he always had the same big smile on his face and he just kind of laughed it off. It was like, oh, I don't feel any, don't feel any older, but you know, but I look it and uh, it really stuck with me. So it was a point where, you know, when I was reflecting on that after he passed away, I really just wanted to try and capture that moment and capture the feeling that I had when, uh, yeah, when that happened. Really, really special. Um, yeah, my grandfather yeah. passed away this year as well. Um, oh, and, the first, and the first thing people always think of, like, remember what he said, remember his, his advice, and he always had so much time for us, so much advice. So the song is really, really special. Um, and speaking about aging, um, I'm turning 30 next month. And uh, your song, next. sorry, what was that? Happy birthday for next month. Thanks, mate. Um, we actually have a song directly about that called Them Dirty Bones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with, with the lyric, let me just read it out. I want to find my stride before I'm 30 because this is where my bones uh, get dirty. Uh, do you have any yep. advice for turning 30? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I got advice about turning 30 once, uh, which was uh, that when by the time you turn 30, like what you want to what you want to be is is doing what you want to be doing, but or like heading heading where you want to be at a light jog. Okay. Like I think the idea being that you don't have to like you don't have to be doing like the thing that you desperately want to do, but like yeah. if you're pointing in the right direction then like, then that's a really good time. Cause that's when, like, I think that's when for, for me, at least I feel like that's when life sort of starts. Like when you really like really dig into and start to value your career for most people and then like your trajectory in life. Like it's, so if you're like, if you're pointing in the right direction and you've, and you've got a little, a little bit of momentum behind you, then, then you, you're doing all right. So hopefully that's the case with yourself. Thanks, man. No, um, I really love that advice. It's really, really um, playing. Yeah. I, I feel like that song, Them Dirty Bones, like the, when I wrote that and what I wrote that about was just like, I, you know, as I said, I didn't start writing music till I was 26. And so I was sort of heading towards 30 at that point. And, and I'd 
having moved cities and things like that and found friends and then I'd found music and found this hobby and this thing that I really love doing and I was just feeling so good about um about like my my life and where I was at in my life that I just felt like you know this is this is where I this is where I want to be you know this is where I want to like this is the sort of like life that I want to lead and the way that I want to be remembered awesome yeah I really love that advice thanks so much um so I've just got a couple questions about the collaborations because I'm pretty curious um yeah. how did you get a song on John Legend's album <laughs> <laughs> I grow who knows man I'm, uh, I have the same question I I wrote some uh I spent a lot of time in LA and I was co-writing with a lot of people I mean, you mentioned before like you know, worked with like one of the guys from One Direction and uh, I wrote a bunch of songs for like, I went to like a bunch of songwriting camps for Demi Lovato and Nick Jonas. And, uh, and yeah, I really just, uh, I fell in love with songwriting as a concept and I was really invested for a long time in just being a songwriter. And, you know, I was spending a lot of my time in Los Angeles doing that. And I, uh, in doing that, like that's where just about all pop songs are, are like written and created. Like for the most part, like that's that's where it all happens because that's where all the best songwriters in the world end up going to. You know, and if people, you know, even in America, people who lived in New York ended up all just moving there, and that's where the whole industry was. And so when you go there, you start, you know, making friends and and um, you get put in a lot of different rooms um, with lots of different people because there's so many people who, you know, who work together and, and it's nice to just, you know, the variety is, is always quite good. So I, uh, I wrote that song with John Legend with, uh, with the, I didn't write it with him, but I wrote it, that song with uh, a couple of songwriters um, who I'd, uh, I'd actually never worked with before on the day that we wrote it. And we uh, just, we didn't have any idea that it was for John Legend or that it would end up there. And we, we just kind of wrote this song about like vulnerability and like in particular, like from the, you know, the male perspective of like being able to like uh, be vulnerable and attach yourself to someone and, and really feel connected to someone and, and like, and, and, you know, inspired by them and and that's the the song that ended up on john's album i think because uh the other guys that i wrote it with ended up collaborating with john directly on a few things um and my suspicion is that they played it to him and he loved it and decided to to do it but i didn't find out that it was coming out until the day the album came out and my manager really? called me and said, and said hey dude this it's your songs on john legend's album and i said i just i i just had no idea i i really i thought I'd heard some things that, oh, John Legend had, you know, has cut a song that you wrote. And I was like, oh, cool. Like nothing will happen with that. Cause you know, I had, I've got a huge list of artists who have recorded things that I wrote or that like, oh, someone tells me uh, it's going to be their single. And then it like, it doesn't happen. And, uh, and so I just had, you know, I was, I don't get my hopes up anymore about those things and it just happened. And yeah, it was just super exciting. Yeah, um, and another song that I really love of yours is with one of the biggest DJs in the world, Kashmir, My Best Life. Um, that song is just so much fun. Um, would you say that that's your normal style of music or? <laughs> no, no, actually not at all. Um, it was, I think the song that I'm releasing now, like that's my style of music. Like I'm writing those songs for myself yeah. um, because it's the sort of music that I want to hear. It's the sort of like the stuff that I, that I really enjoy. It's what I enjoy about pop music. Um, and you know, I'm a big pop music fan and, but, uh, that song, um, I remember writing it with, uh, with Kashmir and, you know, we were both just sort of as a, with a lot of the songs that I write, it just always comes from a place of like, uh, uh, like what's like my story or like what, what is inspiring me or what am I thinking about at that point in time? And, uh, and at that point in time, we were just both sort of, when we started talking and we started connecting on like the idea that like, we've just no idea what's coming next. You know, we've no idea what, uh, what's on, you know, on the horizon or where we're going to end up, but like, we're, we're just making sure that we like make the most of like, of whatever we're doing at that given point in time. Um, a lot of my songs tend to be kind of introspective and in, in, in that way, uh, so as like lyrically, I'd say, yeah, probably quite similar, but as far as like the style, 
Um, I never imagined that song would just like sound as huge as it does because uh, when Cashmere sent me the first, like the first demo, when we first wrote it, it was just over like a, a, a little loop with some like, you know, some synth sounds and it was just like a chord progression and then a vocal and there was, and he was like, oh, I can totally imagine where this is going. And I was like, great. Cause all I can imagine is like what's in front of me right here. And, uh, and then he sent me the, like the, the version that ended up, he ended up releasing and I, I was just blown away. I was like, wow, I don't remember this song sounding so, so massive. I never quite pictured it going there, but he's, uh, he's got a, a vision for those sorts of things. So Fantastic. yeah, I guess it's, it's his style of music for sure, but it's definitely my, uh, it's my style of songwriting. Hmm. Yeah. And that's, I think what makes it so great. Um, and so we've got one more question before we've got a fun little game. Um, what can we expect from you next? Have you got an album coming out? Uh, I think probably a few more singles. Um, yep. I always write like, per, like I always focus on the songs, you know, I spend so much time songwriting that my passion is about trying to write the best song. Hmm. Um, I've never really thought too hard about like trying to put together a, a full body of work. Um, because I think that's, it's a very different approach. You know, you've got to really like start thinking about how everything sounds together. Um, but in my mind, like, I just really like writing singles, like st songs that just stand on their own two feet and just sound, sound really good on their own. So I've got more, uh, more songs that I, I want to release more singles that I want to put out. And then there'll probably some be some point in time where I just put out something, uh, that has a bunch of singles on it. And I, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know when I don't have any like firm plans for that. Um, but, uh, but definitely just, just more songs as the you know over the next few months definitely. I, I think that's what the music industry is representing now anyway that that, that, that is the new model so yeah mm. on top of it good <laughs> <laughs> unintentionally but yeah sounds <laughs> awesome um so the game i've got in mind is called fine and not fine because of your single i'm doing fine <laughs> um, yeah right so the, the idea is that um i'll say something and you can go fine or not fine being whether you're you're cool with it or you're not cool with it. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, let's do yeah. It. Okay. cool with it, not cool with it, fine, not fine. Easy. All right. Tequila shots. Fine. Friends with your ex. Fine. Pineapple on pizza. Very fine. Okay, cool. Um, dad jokes. Fine. Phone calls on public transport, like loud phone calls. Not fine. Not fine, yeah. Yeah, it kind of pisses me off too. <laughs> Uh, what about <laughs> re-gifting presents? Oh, uh, fine. Yeah? I yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the five second rule. Oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. totally fine. Cool. Uh, a draw four and a draw four. Uh, not fine. Oh, really? I don't think that's really, I, don't, I think it, uh. I mean, technically the rule is... <laughs> The, the you rule, can't right the rule is that you can't yeah yeah I'm, I'm a stickler for the rules for the most part so yeah not okay. fine not fine awesome we've got a few more um lying about your age oh, i mean i'm fine if that's what you want to do go sure. nuts awesome <laughs> uh the game of thrones finale oh i mean by the end of season eight i was glad it was over so uh yeah. i'm gonna say not fine sure cool and last one dog sleeping on the bed Oh, <laughs> this is a point of contention with the, my wife and I, because uh, uh, I'm not really all that fine with it. I mean, I'm fine with it, but my dog's stinky at the moment and she just like, she just annoys me at night. So somewhere in the middle. Awesome. As a concept, as a concept fine, but like act, actual uh, as like, you know, something real. No, not right now. <laughs> awesome. Well, su such a great... Uh, it was really great to finally meet you and, and speak with you. Yeah, and you wish you all the best. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, for, thanks for that. Aim. <laughs> no worries. Take care. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Bye. <laughs>